Sharzad Mirgoli Khan is today a successful businesswoman and mother of two. But what she has been through can only be seen in surreal spy thrillers. Her tale stretches from Austria to Dubai and ends up in a U.S. penitentiary. For five years, she was imprisoned in the U.S. on trumped-up charges of allegedly trying to smuggle U.S.-made defense articles into Iran. She was framed and she fought hard to clear her name and regain her freedom. This is her story. In the first episode, we saw that she was merely attending a meeting in Vienna to act as a translator for her now ex-husband. Okay, I have a meeting there. Yeah, I would really appreciate if you can just uh, attend the meeting and act as my translator. Right after they wrapped up the meeting, she was arrested and detained for 28 days in an Austrian detention center. After 28 days, we got, uh, what is called, we got released on bail because the American government failed to provide any uh, document. She was freed with a minor fine and no criminal record was filed under her name in Europe. Alas, no matter how frustrating her 28-day incarceration and ensuing ordeal in Austria really was. The staff members were so aggressive, so rude. The lady hit me with her boots. I was going absolutely insane and crazy. They put me on medical. It was nothing compared to what was in store for her. Shazad Mir Khan. You're telling us this exceptional tale that you went through. And we left off where you were liberated, your temporary freedom from an Austrian prison. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? Well, by then it was not my temporary freedom. I thought that I was free forever and it was just a disaster that I was thrown in and I just got out of it. Uh, but uh, when I, we got released from Austrian prison on bail at the beginning, we went back to UAE. So it was another hell proceeding for me in UAE that what the government of UAE has done to me and my children. And wait, course, wait, wait, what happened when you, when you went back to the UAE and you... You wanted to work as usual? I had my company, yeah. I had my company in uh, UAE. We got back after 68 eight days, we got back to UAE. They sent me a letter to my company that I have to shut down my company. Then they called me from national security of UAE. Wait, wait. So you, you, were, you were innocent, but you didn't have a right to continue your business? No. And the worst thing about UAE government is they have no international law in their country. You can go as an investor into that country, you invest billion of dollars, right? But uh, at the end of the day, the government would decide something out of the blue, within a blink an eye. They just shut down everything, they just take over whatever you have, the property and whatever you have, and they just kick you out of the country. But they wh just deport what was you. the reason? What was the reason? What I was your crime? I had no idea by then. I had no idea. For instance, when I got my, uh, when I got my, I established my company and I called it Twins Group Television Production because of my children, of course. I was a very successful businesswoman that I was about to sign the contract, for instance, with Dubai police to make the 3D animation and whatsoever. But the, on the same exact day, the UAE authority, they have sent me a letter that uh, it was on uh, July 19, July 19, uh, 2005, that I have to resolve my company registration and I have to shut it down. So I got an attorney. I spent hundreds of thousands of dirhams to these attorneys. They went and they said, okay, they filed the case and they just followed up. And at the end, what UAE government has told me, it was just, uh, oh, we have reviewed your letter and noticed a typographic error. And anyway, you should shut down the company. So anyway, anyway, you have to shut it down. Anyway, you have to shut it down. So they called me. They said you have 24 hours to pack your property, remove your children from school, get everything, and you would be deported from this country. We packed our property. I just left everything. We sent everything to Iran. I cannot tell you how UAE government has tortured me and my children. 
So we, we came to Iran, and uh, of course my life has been upside down, and overnight I, I was dropped from top of the mountain to the zero ground. Uh, we came, I, to, um, I found out I couldn't live in Iran, in Iran any longer. I got divorced from my ex-husband, and of course I, I got out of Iran. I went to Cyprus, and uh, when I came to Iran, let me tell you something that I wouldn't forget that one. When I came to Iran, of course, I was trying to find another, com uh, another country to move on because my kids' education, for instance, their first language was English. They were studying in international school, and I had a goal for my children. And um, I knew that I couldn't live here. I needed to do business, international business outside of Iran, and a lot of other things. But when I came to Iran, of course, during the one year that I was staying in Iran, I have traveled eight times to European countries. I mean, I went to Netherlands, I went, I, for instance, when you want to travel to these European Schengen countries, right, you have to apply for a visa. If you are bounded, if you are blacklisted, if you are in a stop list or anything, the embassy of that country would stamp your passport and they refuse your visa, right? Like I would tell you, I mean, I, ha I have so many passports. This is the one that I had it since uh, 2000. If you see, I mean, I've been all over the places. Like, But you were not refused, you were not stamped. No, never, never. This is the first one. The first passport that as much as I was traveling was finished. Here is my passport to Cyprus. Mm -hmm. One passport to Cyprus, it's 5-6-2007. Then I have another one. And there are more Schengen visas. This is Germany. So you felt you were free. You were a free person. I was traveling. I, it was not the feeling. I mean, I was freed and there was nothing because I had my verdict in my hand. I have passed the borders of European countries eight times with the same passport, right? Never arrested, never anything, nothing. When I got in Cyprus, uh, UAE has told me I have to bring them two certificate of clearance. They were not the only country that wouldn't allow me in. It was UAE that I was deported. And they said... And you hadn't happen. committed a crime in UAE? Nothing. Nothing in UAE. Even in Austria, I have not committed a crime. I was not even, you know... If you check my criminal history in Europe right now, of course, there is no criminal history for me. But uh, when we got in Cyprus, I contacted the American embassy to apply for the certificate of clearance. This is the point. For the UAE, actually. For the UAE, why? Because I had a property in UAE that I should have gone and sold out my property to make the investment. I needed the money. I, ne I mean, <laughs> for investment, you need money. So needed you to wanted to go and just sell your property, sell my so property. you needed a clearance. Uh, UAE wanted a clearance from And you had to Iran, get it from the United States. From Iran and United States to give me the visa, to allow me to get into their country. This is their, it was their requirement. I got the one from Iran and for the American one, I contacted the American embassy. And I was like, okay, this is my case. I had this case in Austria in 2005. This is what had happened. I need a certificate of clearance. They told me you cannot get it. You were, they checked my name over the phone. And they said, you cannot get it. You've, uh, you were not ever in the United States. Mm -hmm. I have not ever been in the United States. And you are not a U.S. citizen. And we cannot get it to you. It's not something. You are not eligible to get the, this one. I said, okay. And they were like, okay, do you have any information to give us about your ex-husband? I said, no. On the we phone. We are divorced. Yeah, on the, on the phone from the embassy, U.S. embassy in uh, Nicosia, Cyprus. And I said, no, we are divorced, and I have come here to start a new life. Thank you so much. After that one, I would tell you it was, uh, I think, 9th or 10th October 2007. I went to renew my visa because uh, purchasing the property took some more time in Cyprus. I went there. At Your the visa in what country? Which country? Cyprus. Oh, in Cyprus. Cyprus, Paphos. I went to immigration office of Paphos. They took my passport, and they, it took minutes and then they called me and they started investigating me and they said how did you come into the country i just showed them i said excuse me this is the second time within 60 days i have come to this country from larnaca airport and here are my stamps and other than that these are the other visas that i have been gone here and there and they were like that's so weird how come you were not arrested and i'm like 
why would I be arrested? And they said, no, there's a variant of arrest for you and uh, Washington Interpol wants you. I was like, hold on for a second. I just contacted the American embassy. It's not even 10 days, right? And all of a sudden, since I contacted them, now I'm renewing my visa. You are telling me my name is in stop list. Why wouldn't they stop me at any airport while I was traveling like that? I didn't change anything. The password is the same. My identity is the same. Nothing is changed. I'm the same person. And they said, no, they said you have exported night vision goggles from Austria to Iran. I was like, hold on for a second. Let's go to the hotel because I remember I always took the original verdict of mine whenever I travel, just, just in case, you know, you have your document, you cannot say things. Uh, and I was like, let's go to my hotel, I will show you. Then you contact the Interpol of Vienna, ask them if they want me, and if the American wanted me, why couldn't they extradite me from Austria? I went to Austria for the case, for the night vision goggle case. I was persecuted there. I got my verdict, right? And they had extradition treaty between Austria and United States. It was American government uh, request, right? Once you give me my verdict, you have to keep me in detention center in Austria, right? And then extradite me to United States because these are two separate cases, right? There is no double jeopardy. Nothing like that, and uh, I have to be persecuted. Did you did you did you do anything to to, to convince them? Did you write a letter? Just, do you? No, no, no. I just gave them the verdict. They contacted the Interpol, um, uh, Vienna before uh, American, and uh, then it was they contacted the Interpol. The Interpol said yes, she has been persecuted. It's double jeopardy. They cannot do do that. Uh, the American government failed to extradite me from Cyprus to America because they said it's double jeopardy. You cannot do that. You cannot persecute her twice for the same thing. And then I contacted, of course, I contacted the American embassy. I wrote them and I said, look, if you think that you can cheat on me or anything, because I, was the, I am the ex-wife of somebody, that you could just do whatever you want to because I'm a woman, let me tell you something. <laughs> I was just like, first of all, no matter what you do, if it's your requirement that I come to United States, I would come. You do whatever you want to. I won't talk. They just, they cheated on me. They tricked me because after they failed for extradition, right, uh, the American embassy, the ambassador called me. He was like, Miss Gulikan, we would like to apologize uh, for the misconvenience that had happened. Apparently, there has been some mistakes. And the United States government would like to invite you for a governmental business to United States. I laughed over the phone and I said, uh, well, um, you, you should know that I am an adult and uh, what is the trick? Why would you need me? And he said, no, because your name is in stop list, unless you wouldn't go to the country, uh, we cannot remove your name from the stop list. They told me that I have to go there and they remove my name. You have from to go to the United States. To the United States. So here I'm sitting, right? Uh, I'm com I have come to Cyprus. It's a really tiny country, safe and secure. It was. If I want to stay in Cyprus, I cannot ever get out of Cyprus. Why? Because whenever I apply for any license or any, th um, any uh, visa or anything, right? Any airport I would go, my name is in stop list. Mm. They would stop me. They would do the investigation. I have to give them, you know, to, to give them the verdict and just start over. I couldn't do, I wanted to do business. Uh, I was not a housewife to go and sit there and I would be like, I would be hidden or whatever. Anyway, I went uh, there. So my only option was just to move on to America see what they have to do, what they have to say, whatever they want to say. I knew I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. So there was no fear of, uh, you know, you have done something, you are scared to go. But uh, on the other hand, I knew that American governments are cheaters, liars, and uh, what they're saying, it's not based on truth. So I made up my decision. I said, OK, I'm coming to United States. They gave me a parole letter. They didn't give me visa. They gave me a parole letter for 15 days, official uh, invitation. So you plan to just return back? I mean, you wanted to have your visa, uh, you stop list checked out, and 
uh, wiped from the stop list definitely and then just return and do your business in Cyprus. Exactly. That's what I said. Because the American government told me if you can come to the United States only for 10 days. It would take just 10 days to remove your name from stop list, right? You know you are clean. You know you haven't done any client. If there is anything about night vision goggles, you have been persecuted. You have paid your penalty. You are cleared up, right? So I said, okay, I'll come. I would go, I clear my name in the United States, then I would come back to Cyprus. It's just a matter of 10 days, what the American said. I mean, the visa was just for 15 days. The ticket, which they got it for me, and it was a return ticket, it was for 10 days too. And I said, So they got you the return ticket as well? Yeah, my ticket was return ticket. It was, uh, my flight was on 16 December So they intended to make you return? Make me believe that I am going to the United States, they would welcome me, they would uh, remove my name from the stop list, and I am coming back to Cyprus, living my life. So right? when you were talking with these people from the embassy, did you feel any sort of aggressive uh, attitude or any sort of uh, bad intention in what they were saying to you? They are um, extremely manipulative people. What I experienced with US government, they are so manipulative. I mean, they manipulate things. I mean, they act like they are, they are your savior. They feel how much you have gone through. And if it was the mistake, they are willing to apologize, to apologize, right? And uh, just get you, help you as a human because they are the human rights protectors on earth, basically. Uh, they're going to protect you and get you back what you have lost. This is the way that they act. So what happened was I got my verdict. I got, um, um, I mean, I got the ticket and my mother brought my children for a few hours. I saw them and they took me to the airport in, Nico in Larnaca. Um, I got on the plane. I went to, my flight was from Larnaca to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Miami. What was your impression all through this? While you were going through this, uh, this all these things happening to you, what, what was inside you? What did you feel inside you? I was torn apart, but trying just to hold on. I mean, every single thing that is happening, one part you're losing, it's something is lost. You felt you were losing everything or did you not, have not the financially or uh, you know I'm talking about spiritually you're like somebody is just squishing you and they're just trying to break you you know they, they do everything to destroy you but you have to hold on because I am a mother you cannot change the fact at the end of the day I am a mother I have two children I have life responsibility and I ha no matter whatsoever would happen to you, you have to hold on. You are supporting two other people, right? So it was just sometimes I was like, Lord, just end it. I can't take on anymore. I've seen it. I mean, I thought UAE, what they have done to me, it was the end of me. Sometimes I felt like I'm a dead person just moving around. You know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how you have to manage your children mentally. You have to act for them, just being happy, but you are not. So you, got, you, get, in, you get in the plane? Did you manage I got to... in the plane. Yeah, of course. I got in the plane and I arrived to Miami. And when I came out of the uh, plane, right, the whole bunch of people were standing there. I remember this. Uh, the whole people were standing there and I came out of the plane and I was like, excuse me, where can I find ICE agencies? Because I was invited by okay, them. Okay, let's, let's keep it there. Okay. And next time we return to the next episode with more adventures and more tales of Sharzad Mirghodi Khan and the exceptional things which happened to her when she went to the United States and her oh. vision and her memories of a witness inside a U.S. prison. And you can send us your comments and your reactions at witness at presstv.ir.